For most of the past month, the Western press has widely reported that Tigray People's Liberation Front forces are advancing on Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia, and that the city is about to fall. Many Ethiopians, Ethiopian government officials, and Ethiopians in the diaspora have said that this is a lie manufactured to harm Ethiopia and frighten people into fleeing the city. KPFA's Ann Garrison reports. Two weeks ago, in an interview with CNN's Becky Anderson, Ethiopian Foreign Press Secretary Bilain Seyoum accused CNN of misinforming its global audience by reporting that Addis Ababa is under siege and the city is about to fall. We are seeing armed groups fighting your government, increasing its numbers as they advance towards the capital. What's happening on the ground and how far are the TPLF and other allies from Addis Ababa? Becky, thank you so much for having me. Before I answer your question, it would be quite disingenuous of me to respond without first addressing the big elephant in the room. And it's important for me to share with you, as well as your global audience, that Ethiopians, a majority of Ethiopians in Ethiopia, as well as abroad, strongly feel that CNN has covered the conflict over the past year in a manner that is highly biased and detached from context. And a recent example is the hysteria that CNN had caused last week, as if Addis Ababa was under siege, sending a global message that the city is about to go down. Anne Fitzgerald, director of the Balsili School of International Affairs at the University of Waterloo, Ontario, said that she does not expect to see TPLF marching into Addis Ababa. I don't think a march of columns of troops is anything that is foreseeable into Addis Ababa. Uh, I think that sort of warfare was playing out in the North Wallow area and just north of Mille. But what we are seeing is insurgency warfare that's playing out with the form of collaborators, collaborators who are working with the TPLF. Dagny Shutashomi, an Ethiopian-American businessman who just arrived in Addis Ababa from Los Angeles, told Ethiopian satellite television that he considers the misreporting that the capital city is about to fall part of a diabolical plan to undermine the nation. There is something sinister about all that. Somebody's trying to stage this self-fulfilling prophecy, something that they want to happen. They are speaking of it as if it has happened. I've been here three days. I came on Sunday morning. I have traveled around Addis. I've seen the situation. It's calm, as calm as ever. The warnings that have been coming out, it appears to me that it is something concocted to create a diplomatic stampede so that foreign diplomats and NGOs and corporations would flee from Ethiopia and cause economic and other destruction to immobilize the government of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. And tourism is affected. Absolutely. When a federal agency such as the FAA in the United States makes a statement saying that Ethiopian airlines might be struck with a surface-to-air missile, that is something unprecedented. It is almost a ploy to destroy one of the most significant source of foreign currency for the Ethiopian Airlines and the emblem of this country. So I see this coordinated attack against the Ethiopian state by the United States, by Biden's administration, and also by Western governments and agencies that dance to the tune of the Biden administration. An Ethiopian comic and impersonator shared this send-up of the BBC News on his YouTube channel, The Jammy Show. As you can see, Addis Ababa is going up in flames. The whole city is burned to the ground. The seat of the African Union, the highest city in Africa, is becoming a playground for scavengers like hyenas, vultures, dragons and dinosaurs. The explosion here is so intense, it makes... Hiroshima and Nagasame look like fireworks. If I don't make it alive, make sure you tell my family I died saving humanity. BBC News. We tell so many lies and we are so envious we make the devil jealous. BBC News. Propagating lies and information to invade the next nation. In Berkeley, for Pacifica, KPFA Radio, I'm in Garrison.